Good morning, gardening friends. Today is Sunday morning, November 17th, about eight o'clock. And it is gorgeously sunny outside. No rain, at least for now. And uh, it's about 58 degrees. It's a beautiful day. And I thought I'd start in the front porch since it's chilly and everything's damp outside. I did have a request last week about care of Phalaenopsis orchids. And I'll be honest with you, uh, I don't have great luck with them, but I will tell you what I do uh, that makes them not die as fast. <laughs> That's about the best way I can put it. The primary thing or the biggest thing is watering. You just about always buy orchids nowadays in a pot with no drain hole. And uh, they'd say to use ice cubes and other things just to put a little bit of water in. I have found that that's it's just, I can't be bothered. So what I do is I take them out of the pots. They come with an inner pot that has drainage. And I take that to my kitchen sink and I run water through it. Uh, it'd probably be better if you used filtered water, but you run water through it for probably 30 seconds or so, and then let it drip for a couple of minutes and then put it back in the pot. And uh, it should last at least a couple of months, possibly longer. Years ago, I'm talking like 40 years ago, I used to be able to buy, when I lived in Wilmington, Delaware, I used to be able to buy cut Phalaenopsis orchids, just the flowers, and just putting them in a vase, the cut flower by itself would last just about a month. So you should get a little bit more life out of it, being that it's attached to its the plant. So in any event, that's what I know. Watering is the key. Uh, I've think it's been years since I've grown orchids because they're fussy and I just didn't have the time for them as time went on. So there you have it, <laughs> Gary's care of a Phalaenopsis orchid. There are plenty of good YouTube channels out there that talk about orchid care and you may just want to Google one of those or call one of those up. Uh, they probably know more than I do, but there you have it. The other thing I did this week, or last week, was I started an amaryllis bulb. And I did buy my amaryllis bulbs from Lowe's. Turns out they had them. I, think, I don't know if I told you. It's been about like two or three weeks since I bought the bulbs. I planted one up, and this one, I like to get loose bulbs because then you can kind of see, like this one's got two flower buds. One here and one there coming. You can kind of pick the po the heaviest, juiciest looking bulbs that way. So, see if there's anything else I want to talk about in here. Oh, the other thing I did this week, let me sit down for this and switch hands, is I went to Lowe's and they had put all of their spring bulbs on sale. And I typically don't buy a lot of spring bulbs because I found through the years that it's a big fuss. Uh, between you and me, though, I did buy one bag of olives that I uh, olives of tulips that I have in the refrigerator. Uh, you have to be careful when you store bulbs in a refrigerator because you don't want to store them near fruit. Uh, I have a special little drinks refrigerator in my den, and the little crisper is full of bulbs. I've got paper whites there. I've got four other amaryllis bulbs. You don't need to chill paper whites and amaryllis, but chilling keeps them from sprouting. They'll want to sprout. And I'll show you the paper whites in the backyard are just about ready to bloom. Uh, but tulips definitely need a four to eight weeks refrigeration period and in order to bloom. But if you have any fruit nearby, 
it will actually destroy the flower that's already in the bulb. So, and fruit, we, you, which I found out one year, turned out to include avocados. So, because I used to put them in my regular crisper with other things. So I bought a bunch of daffodils. Getting back to daffodils, I talked to a lady that was buying a bunch of the bulbs, and she kind of talked me into it. She said she's been buying daffodils for years and putting them straight in the ground without refrigeration. So I thought, let me do that this year. So I got seven dozen. <laughs> Here is one type I got. It's called Jetfire. These are small. And so I got two dozen of those, and I planted them behind uh, my love seat in the far back corner of my yard uh, next to the snowball viburnum. Well, on this side of a little rock wall. I'll show you when we get there. I got two dozens of these. These are called Tahiti. These I've had luck with, a white version, so I'm hoping I'll have luck with these. Uh, the white version comes back every year and multiplies. I'm hoping this does too. I planted these in a line in front of my white picket fence in the front yard. And then I got some Dutch Master. Had these before. They've never come back, but I thought they are such quintessentially daffodil daffodils. <laughs> I planted them uh, next to the road, uh, right at the corner of the road where I have my crinum. I put a clump of six on either side of the crinum. This is ice follies. I planted a clump of six again on either side of the crinum. This is replete. I, I headed more towards the whites and oranges. It's another double, again, Planted it next to the crinum. And then finally, Pink Charm. I basically got a dozen of every <laughs> daffodil they had. I figured I would test it out this year and see how they do in terms of coming back. So it should look spectacular this spring at the, at the corner of my property because I've got these four clumps on either side of the crinum lily. So, uh, in any event, let's get started. <laughs> Seems funny to be wearing long pants, and I actually bought some firewood. One of the things I did have done last week was I had my chimney inspected. I always like to get my chimney inspected every year just to ensure it's safe to burn. Here you can see the potager is still looking good. We've had a chilly day so far, but no frosts. In fact, this week is supposed to be the chilliest day yet. And I think I saw it was going to get down to 45. We're going to get some torrential rains Tuesday. And I'm debating. I cleaned up my grass, all of the edging. We did it extra nice this week because I've got winter rye and I want to seed winter rye and I'm debating whether to seed it before the torrential rains or after because I don't want the seed to wash away. Haven't decided on that, but I definitely am going to fertilize my palms. A torrential rain is great when you fertilize palms because it helps get the fertilizer in the soil. All of the fertilizers say to water them in. These bananas are looking spectacular in the sun. And it does look like these gardenias have caught the ones that were popped out of the ground, which is a good thing, as Martha would say. <laughs> oh, I see one lone fig back in there. Of course, the fig has lost most of its leaves. I don't know, uh, this is the first, the second winter for this fig. I have had figs in the past, a fig at least in the past, and it didn't always do well with winter frosts. It wouldn't kill it all the way, but usually there'd be some frost damage. So we shall see. In this location, it's on the south side of my house, and it's protected by these loquats. And oh my gosh, this loquat is absolutely in full blossom right now. 
being next to other things helps protect the more tender plants. Cassia is still blooming, although not a lot of blooms. You can see here it's a member of the bean family. My cryptomeria, secret parts. <laughs> that's the translation. It has little flowers. Uh, that's how it got its name from the Greek. Secret parts, cryptomeria. It has little flowers hidden up in the leaves. It seems to be doing okay, although it's got a little bit of a yellowish tinge. I don't know if I bought it that way. I'll have to look through an old video. <laughs> I did plant flowers around up here. And back in here is where I put the clumps. One, two, three, four of those daffodils that I told you about. Pansies should last through to about February, March. The dianthus should last the whole year and beyond, so we shall see. They have a really nice fragrance. And then on this side, I have a little gouge out of the Aspidistra. And I did the same thing. Four clumps of daffodils in the back. These are taller daffodils. And uh, pansies and dianthus in the front. The bananas by the street are looking good. However, the breezes we've had have really torn up the leaves, but they don't seem to be, they <laughs> seem to be the worst for wear, but they haven't turned yellow, so that's a good sign. All of my bananas seem to have done really well. I did not plant any daffodils here, quite simply because I ran out of them. Here's where I put the yellow double daffodils. I put a, a line right in front of the fence. I normally don't like to plant bulbs in a line, but I did here, just to simply be able to keep, to know where they are. I tucked them right next to the fence. So that way, if I plant stuff in front of it later in the year, it, they shouldn't be bothered. And again, these dianthus should last through the summer, but the pansies won't. It always looks good when the grass has been edged nicely. I do it probably about once a month and let my lawn guy do it every other week when he comes in. I prefer to edge it myself. Otherwise, the gap will get bigger and bigger and bigger and I'll have no lawn left. Oh my goodness. My japonicas are starting to set bud, well, to, to open. Next week, maybe next week. Encore azaleas are doing really well. And this is one I saw this morning. My camellia japonica, this is an unnamed variety. It was a seedling that I bought. It's a double white. This one's actually a few days old because it has some yellow tinges. How about that one? That's the same. But there are a lot more buds yet. It's kind of, to me, it reminds me of the Professor Sargent, only it's a white version as opposed to the red. I don't think you can buy Professor Sargent anymore because it's used as a rootstock for most camellias now. It's a very vigorous camellia. Yeah, all of these have buds, but I don't see any of them opening yet besides the white one. It's actually a little early for the japonicas. They normally don't bloom until December, so that's okay. The season will stretch out. I did also tidy up my monkey grass. You can see some residue on the walkway, but I went through with the weed whacker and edged to get the droopy part off of the off of the walk and it does want to spread out and so I use the other side to actually get rid of the roots that were coming up in the actual walkway itself 
I also did the liriope. Just prettied it up a little. One thing to keep in mind if you do use a weed whacker on your monkey grass or liriope is it's not like a regular grass. If you make a mistake and take a chunk out of it, it's going to be like that until next year when it sends up new greens. Make a beautiful grass or lawn because you cut it once and that's it. Cut it and forget it. <laughs> like the old set it and forget it commercial. I do see a lot of new buds coming up on the fig, but it's definitely lost all its old flowers. Whew, I'm getting a little chilled. I finally broke down. I haven't been drinking coffee since I was sick. And uh, to use my Keurig, or actually I have a knockoff Keurig, or Kerrig, however you pronounce it. I uh, bought some hot cocoa capsules. So I'm looking forward to a nice cup of hot cocoa shortly. Here my white dove's Sasanqua camellia is still in bloom. This was the first one to bloom and it still looks gorgeous. It just really performs and performs. I wanna say it's been about four weeks now of blooms have been harvesting my satsumas, picking the most orange of the ones. Uh, gave a bunch away. We'll be doing more. Uh, I'm just waiting for them to orange up a little bit. And I'm kind of interested to see these brown ones, if they're any good inside, because they, uh, you know, just the conditions, I guess, burned them on the outside. Let's see what else here. My cordyline still doing well. Toad lilies have finally bloomed out. And my star jasmine, I need to trim it back, has started growing up the trellis. That is one thing I have found. You can get the smallest star jasmine you can find. No sense in spending lots of money for a big one and put it in a couture like that. And uh, it will really, especially if you do it in the spring, it will swallow up the thing in no time at all. And you'll be pruning it and pruning it and pruning it. Ooh, some lower blossoms, but on this pink one, pink camellia, beautiful one. Gotta bend down to see it. Uh-oh, I hit my bell. Have to be careful with that bell. I think they're gone now, but there was a wasp nest up inside. They're friendly. They tolerated me being around them. I keep the friendly wasps if anything tries to sting me. And I have been stung. I usually kill those. <laughs> My air potato is still looking well. I think I've, I have sprayed it a number of times and I think the cold has helped to drive the little beetles away. I don't know as if this angel's trumpet here is going to bloom in time before the frost, but we shall see. It'll survive the winter, it has before. I did notice this is why this is called an air potato. I figured I'd show you this. It has little potato-like things that grow on the vine. Typically, they get bigger. They can get as big as your fist. I don't see any big ones on this vine. And if they fall to the ground and lay on the ground, they will sprout. If you hate your neighbor, you can toss one of those over the fence. And they will grow up trees. They will do damage. I see my... Back in here, the little green is uh, Lenten roses are sprouting. That one, this one, I don't see any new sprouts on it. Unfortunately, I picked probably about, I'd say four large bags of fruit from that tree. That tree wasn't flopped as much as this one. 
and you can see here it's just all over the top of that camellia. It will pop up once when you harvest the fruit, but the fruit on this tree is not ripe yet. The fruit on that tree was, so we picked what was ripe. I refreshed the water in my baptismal font yesterday. That looks good. You can see the little water going there, the fountain. This bed still looks pretty good, even though it's got summer flowers. I did order some new plastic hanging pots. I didn't know you could buy plastic hanging pots. These with the pansies, of course, I bought the pansies and put them in. Those were the three pack pansies for $1.57. <laughs> so for $4, oh, there's a cat up on the roof. I filled the two pots, but this, the pots are starting to sag. So I went on Etsy the first time. I gave up on eBay because they stopped taking American Express and went to Etsy and found four hanging pots. So I've ordered them, they'll be in next week. Did a lot of ordering. I also have my oven is broken and the guys are gonna come tomorrow to fix it, but they came last week and found out it was a part that they didn't have, so I ordered that online. <laughs> I googled a mana stove parts and found a, a distributor and was able to buy the part, and they shipped it. Fortunately, the gas company didn't charge me for their visit, but they will charge me tomorrow when they come out. This bougainvillea is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm so glad I bought that one. I think that's the kitten cat that's up on top of the fence there. doesn't have a name yet. I haven't named the kittens. We'll end up at the deck. Let's go around here for now. Ligularia is still not opening up all the way, but it's starting. That's the flower. And that one has sent up a spike as well, even though it's up inside the palm. I'm going to try and move that out of there this winter, when it's done blooming, move it closer to the palm tree. Back in here, all is well. The one thing I did not plan when I brought that Japanese seat over here is when it rains, the mud splashes up all over it. When I refreshed my fountains yesterday, I had to go ahead and clean that off. But it is a nice spot to sit and sort of ponder the, or listen to the uh, waterfall. You can smell the flowers of the fatsias. They've got the little stamen sticking out. Slight onion flavor. Finally, I'd identified it a few weeks ago. Oh, this camellia sasanqua is still, no, this sasanqua camellia is still in bloom. You've got to be able to, the sun is blinding me. I don't know about you guys. But it is a beautiful single flowered pink and it's got a lot of flowers on it. Really the most it's had in a long time. Foxtail fern is still doing well in a pot. I think I told you I, supposedly it will grow in the ground here but I wasn't certain of that so I had the pot so I stuck it in a pot. I think you can see the pink from here. It's hard to get a picture with the sun in your face. More fatsias in bloom. The, uh, yeah, the potted plants back there are doing well. Oh, telltale signs of a bloom on my Canary Island date palm. I don't know if you can see it, but right there is a bloom stalk. It'll be happy to be fertilized. Vincas, that's what's in the hanging pots, Vincas. The first pot, I had another one, and the first pot died. It was just too much in the sun. And I guess it just gets too dry when they're in a pot like that, because they like full sun. But these in the partial shade in pots, you can see they're still doing well.
kumquats. Kevin, the guy that mows my lawn, came in and took a bunch of kumquats. I have enough. Thanksgiving is coming up shortly. And I'll be making my kumquat cranberry sauce. Strawberries. I don't think are going to make because it's just too cool and wet. Well, they're there, but they've got fungus on them. They probably won't make this time of the year. My plum tree is uh, losing its leaves. By the way, the satsumas I have are all owari, O-W-A-R-I. They're the most hardy of the satsumas. That was why I got them. Back in here, it's looking good. Nothing's wilted, that's always a good sign. In fact, I hadn't watered because it's been damp and rainy most of the week. I did not water that ginger lily and it looks like it's still good. Normally when I transplant them, I cut the flowers off, but apparently it's rained enough where the uh, roots seem to have caught. It was apparently so damp that I see I lost a, some uh, antirhinum snapdragons. And I don't know as if you can see back in there, in the far corner, my snowball viburnum is re-sprouting. After I trimmed it back here, behind this bench, right in front of this little rock wall, is where I planted two dozen of the small uh, daffodils, orange and yellow daffodils. Last year, I had a bunch of daffodils that I bought in bloom and they're all planted in front of this palm tree here, underneath the wandering dude. So we'll see, they should come back, we'll see. Here you can see the star jasmine, needs a little prune up again. Ooh, my ground orchid has come all the way up to there, from back in there. I'll dig that up and find another spot for it. I don't want it coming up in a... Well, I guess it's not going to hurt the wandering dude any if it comes up there. It is a pretty plant, the ground orchid is. It is very susceptible to frost. The very first frost will kill it to the ground. Well, it'll brown it and I'll cut it to the ground. The only problem... I was sold it as pleated palm, but I found out it's called the ground palm. The only drawback to it in my case, not a drawback for most, is that it looks an awful lot like the Aspidistra back there. And I should mention the Nandina berries are starting to turn. They'll turn a nice red by Christmas. And these blueberry bushes should turn a nice purple color. Again, more flowers on the loquat. And because of all the rains we've had, I guess this week, it's uh, no flowers on the angel's trumpets. I'm trying to think if there was anything else in here I wanted to mention. I don't believe so. I did clean this bed out last week of the, uh, what was it, the brown aspidistra. Oh, here's one flower. Of this camellia, again, another unnamed variety. Pretty, it's a white and red. My planning when I put this garden together was in this garden. Oh, there's the female that was up on the top of the roof. I have four camellias, one, two, and then in the other corner. Those are like a watermelon pink. And these are primarily pink and white. And the ones here in the corner, they're not blooming yet. This camellia and the one on the other end are white flecked pink. So I was on the pink white kick. And of course that one in the corner is a solid pink, but it doesn't bloom with, any, with, with anything else blooming. So it's kind of by itself. 
And actually, why I always tell you to buy camellias in bloom, I actually bought three of the same, that I think it's called peppermint stick. And there was one where the statue is. And uh, they have sports where one branch will come up just a pinkish red color. I always called it puce. <laughs> And in any event, uh, you'll get a branch or two here and on the other one. But the one that I planted where the statue is was all that color. And I don't like the color. So I dug it out and threw it out. And uh, by that time, it you can't really buy large camellias. So I thought, what could I put in the middle? So happened to see that statue and bought the statue. So it was meant to be. The leaves have just about all fallen off of my kefir, uh, kefir uh, pear. Most of the things I have here are evergreens. I don't have a lot of deciduous stuff. This is starting to bloom again. Laura Petalum. It is a member of the witch hazel, also called fringe flower. Cardboard palm still doing well. Oh, I wanted to show you that, well, while we're here, short of that one dead one there, <laughs> my cyclamen are doing well. They've actually bloomed more. They are in pots. I don't like to put dirt next to the house, but they're doing, they seem to like, I've had them here before, and they like the northern exposure. They'll get no sun at all, all winter. In fact, you see how the sun shines. My deck does not see sun. So all winter long. It's in full sun in the summer, but in the winter it's in full shade. These are the paper whites I planted three weeks ago. And you can see buds. So these should be blooming in time for Thanksgiving. I'll probably bring one of the pots in when it starts to bloom. Two would be overwhelming. The smell of the paper whites is very fragrant. I like it, it's sweet, but it can be cloying after a while, just too, too much. The dew on the Laura Pedalum looks kind of nice today. Leaves are falling off. Of this, they will fall off totally, and you'll just have sticks for my plumeria all winter long. So it pays to be around other things that don't lose their leaves. Oh, a cat must have jumped on a car. And there you can see my pansies. That little ridge or edge of the deck may get a little bit of sun, so uh, the pansies may live there. And my flowers off of my chalice vine have come and gone, so I'll be digging that out and repotting it. I did notice this one rose here seems to have almost died, so I will be digging it out. I need to get at the footings on the deck. That's the low spot of the deck. It needs to be jacked up a little, and you can't get at it with the roses there, so... I'm going to dig that rose up and clean it up and then replant it. Although it looks like one on that end has died. It's not died, but it's dying. I'm tempted to just chuck the roses, although I've had these now for five or six years. Kind of like old friends. They're not really practical in our heat. Uh, the flowers, you can't enjoy them, at, can't enjoy them outside because they'll go from bud to spent flower in one day. And let's see how much rain we had over the last week. I haven't emptied my rain gauge yet. Ooh, two and a half inches. Good. But that's the reason why it's been wet, wet, wet. We didn't really have any downpours. That was over the whole week. And uh, some plants don't like the dampness. These bananas are still doing well over here. But I guess that's about it for today. I'll leave you with a view. You can't probably can't see the cat on the roof. <laughs> and the bougainvillea. Bougainvillea. 
I hope you all get to go out in your garden and enjoy them, especially in the cooler weather. And I look forward to seeing you all next week. Take care.